Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Let's talk about used games. Why not? Why not? Everyone obviously wants to talk about used games. At least my Twitter and my YouTube comments indicate that this is the case. In fact, the majority of comments on the new Xbox video were not in fact about the Xbox at all, but about how they disagreed with my stance on used games. It's very strange that people on a PC-orientated channel would be in favor of used games considering they can't actually benefit from them in any way. This is the kind of thing that we got rid of years ago. And buying a used game on PC these days is very difficult, not impossible. This is a direct result of going, for the most part, digital with our actual games themselves. We're talking about even physical copies that are bound to either Origin or Steam as a prime example of that. As well as, of course, the rise of MMOs, free-to-play games, and so on and so forth. The used game market for the PC, aside from really old games that aren't even on sale anymore, is basically redundant. And even then, a lot of these older games end up on GOG for a cheaper price with no DRM in the first place. So why on earth would you really want to buy a used copy of that? And yet, yeah, I guess there's a lot of console people that also watch the channel, and that's cool too. I mean, it's not directly aimed at them, but we do talk about console stuff every now and again, because at the end of the day, anything that affects the whole game market does also affect PC gaming. There's no real question about that one. So, let's talk about used games. Now, I hold a position which I feel a lot of gamers don't like, and that's the idea that I believe that used games are not good for the games industry and that consumers do not necessarily have a right to purchase used games or indeed sell them. Now, a lot of people will turn around and tell me that that's a horrible thing to say and blah, 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 and whatever. If you'd prefer that I pander to your opinions and say, yeah, I'm totally in favor of that. Fight the power, bros. Yeah, he's terrible. Blah, 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 blah. Then you're on the wrong channel. That's not really what I do. And uh, I believe very much in the if you build it, they will come idea. And if you don't like the opinions, then you can just not watch. I mean, change the channel. It's <laughs> not difficult, is it? So let's talk about why I don't think that used games are that good an idea. And really, this all stems from working at game. Uh, game being a UK-based retail store, the biggest one when it comes to games. And they focused a lot on used. A lot. To the point where the first few days it's drilled into you that selling used is the most important thing you can do. Yeah? And you should do it at the expense of pretty much everything else where possible. If you have a used console, sell the used console. If you have a used copy of a game, sell the used game. And it's not just sell the used game, it's aggressively push that game onto somebody that was going to buy a new copy. That is what we are trained to do, that is what we are taught to do. We need to keep in our minds whether or not there is a used copy, and we need to push it to the consumer in a fairly heavy-handed way, expressing that it's just as good as new, expressing that you're saving money, and so on and so forth. Yeah? And that's really how it works. Now here's the thing, because of that, you actually have a massive, and I do mean a massive culture of used game sales where none would previously exist. There are some consumers that will hunt out those kind of deals, yeah? And they're okay with saving five bucks on a used copy, and that will be what they will hunt for all the time. They will ask specifically for a used. And they'll find it on the shelf. Recently, a lot of stores have actually started putting the used copy up directly next to the new one and saying, you know, it's good as new and so on and so forth. And we warranty it just like everything else. And one of the big concerns, of course, for a lot of people was that used copies would be damaged. But lately, that's become less and less relevant to the point where even if a DVD or a Blu-ray is heavily damaged, resurfacing it costs barely anything. And even a lot of those stores actually offer that service in and of itself for a couple of dollars or whatever. So now you're in a position where stores, retail stores are saying, used is as good as new. Yeah, It's exactly the same. So you can't really argue then that you could apply the same logic that people are trying to use, the idea of used DVDs, used CDs, used cars is probably the worst one. I don't know why people bring that one up. That is, uh, I mean, talk about false equivalency. A $60 game versus a $20,000 car. A luxury versus an essential. It, it, it's such a ridiculous comparison. And even then, when you buy a used car, you are buying it in the knowledge that this car has actually some wear and tear associated with it. Yep, It's going to last less long than a new car. At least in theory it should, right? Games don't work that way. If a game gets scratched up, you get it resurfaced for $2. No big deal. You're not going to run that game into the ground and get physical wear and tear every single day of the week for years on end. Yeah? And more to the point, of course, you're not relying on that used game to actually keep working. Otherwise, you might die on the highway. It's an incredibly stupid comparison. The wear and tear very much applies to stuff like books. 
It applies to stuff like cars, a lot of physical goods. It doesn't apply very well to digital media. Because digital media either works or it doesn't. And there are some scenarios where a big scratch on the disc may very well cause a certain level not to work. But there is no middle ground there. Let's say you ran a videotape over and over and over again. Eventually, wear and tear will be associated with that. There will be eventually a degradation in picture quality. If you ran a car into the ground, then there is going to be a degradation in performance and safety. This is simply flat out not true with games. When you buy a used game, you are getting exactly the same as the new guy got. Unless, of course, an online pass or some Project $10 stuff is incorporated into it. Which is interesting, because that stuff very much, to me, was an attempt to differentiate the used market from the new by saying, right, if you want to buy used, okay. But you have to accept that there is a disadvantage to buying used games. And that is counterbalanced by the fact that these used games are cheaper. As it stands, there is no reason at all to buy new when you have access to used because you are saving money but getting no disadvantage in return whatsoever. The only time that this doesn't apply is when you're dealing with collector's editions. Now, CDs, DVDs, and books. This is the argument that people like to bring up. Let me shoot that full of holes for you. So, CDs. Pretty good comparison, you might think, considering both very much optical media. The argument that likes to be made against the idea that publishers and developers are entitled to some kind of payment from used sales is, well, the music industry doesn't do that. And bands don't do that. Yeah, you're right. But why is that exactly? Well, that would be because they already have multiple renewable and reoccurring revenue streams. Royalties. Great example. Radio Play. Spotify. Pandora. Various different things like that. The music industry is set up in such a way that CD sales are not necessarily that relevant. You have royalties consistently coming in over the course of years, I might add. And royalties are continually paid even for older music. They keep coming in based on how many people listen and so on and so forth. Those fees continue to flow to the music label and hopefully also get to the artist, but who the hell knows in this industry. Not only that, but as a band, as a musician, you have the ability to go out on tour and actually play music for people in a live environment, which is where a lot of bands make the bulk of their cash. You have multiple revenue streams, and one could even argue that the purchase of a CD for some bands, not all, but for some, is actually a promotional tool more so than it is a revenue stream because those CDs and that presence actually gets people into the concert hall. And that's where they can sell them the merch, that's where they get a cut of the takings, and so on and so forth. And that's where they make that real money. So what about DVDs? All right, okay, let's talk about DVDs then. Some people seem to think that's a strong argument. Let me shoot that one full of holes as well. So where did the DVD come from exactly? Yeah, if it was a movie, it came from the cinema. As in, it came out first in the cinema where people went to see it, where people went to give money to that movie. And more often than not, that movie will take in more box office money than it actually costs to make. And that's just the first part of the sale. After that, you then go to rentals and DVD. More often than not, you allow rentals first. That was the old model. That's kind of changing now. But now you have the ability to rent via Redbox and also via stuff like Amazon Instant Video and by iTunes. I use both of those very frequently. It's a very convenient way of renting a movie. If I want a new title, I'll go there, I'll rent it one click and then I'll watch it and it'll stream. Or if I want to go on a plane, I'll do it via iTunes because then I get the copy on my iPad that I can watch without an internet connection. Yeah, and I feel that paying four to five dollars to watch those movies is pretty cool. You know, that's all right for me. Some people might think it's too expensive, but of course there are other options. You can get cheaper movies on those services as well. Not to mention, of course, that Amazon Prime has a bunch of free movies. Netflix, same kind of thing. That's the second part of it. The third part of it is actually selling the physical DVD, which you can do. Sell the DVD, sell the Blu-ray. And then after that, you've got another part. In fact, in, I think you actually have two, if you think about it. Although these days, more often than not, the premium release of a pay-per-view movie is often synced up with the rental release. It didn't used to be. There used to be a very clear chain of command in that respect, but that's not the case anymore. But the final part is syndication to television. Yeah, so those movies will actually then be bought to show on specific networks. You syndicate out, you make further money from that. Yeah. So you are making money in like five or six different ways, and this system is well established. For games, where is that? You want to tell me where that is? <laughs> because here's the thing. 
that DVD sale, that used DVD sale, does not hurt anywhere near as much as a used game sale would. Not even close. The stores that sell these are not pushing them actively over new copies. That's one of the big differences. If I walk into Best Buy and I pick up a copy of Iron Man and I take it to the counter, at no point will I be sold a used copy. Uh, they won't say, oh, we've got a used copy of this for cheaper. Do you want that? And actually push me into getting it. They won't do that. They'll just sell me the copy. Easy peasy. No big deal. If I want to go and buy used CDs, or if I want to go and buy used DVDs, I often have to go to specialist stores in order to do that. I don't usually get to do that in regular stores. Whereas in regular game specialist stores, they all sell used games very, very prominently. And even if they didn't, the revenue streams associated with those different forms of media are diverse. For games, no. No, they're not. They are trying to diversify them. Things like online passes, of course, which got universally rejected, at least if you were to believe Reddit. And then you've got stuff like DLC. Now, DLC is a pretty cool way of monetizing used copies, in my opinion. I think that's actually a really good way of doing things, and yet, obviously, there's a violent backlash against that as well. I mean, we seem to hate pretty much everything. But let's keep shooting that analogy full of holes, shall we? Let's keep shooting those comparisons full of holes. So here's something that, even if you disagree with everything I just said, which would kind of make you crazy because that stuff's factual, think about this for a second. Think about who actually takes the cost load, who actually has to pay money when these used games are involved. Who's making the money and who's losing the money, right? So we've already established that there are large multinational retailers that actively push used games over new and are actively denying sales. We're not talking about the notion of they wouldn't have bought new to begin with. These people would have bought new, they came to the counter with new, and then they were sold used. I mean, you could say upselling, but it's actually exactly the opposite. But for the retailer, it definitely is upselling because that profit margin is huge in comparison to the new game there. Let's talk about who this actually affects. When you sell a used game, at this point, without the online pass system in place, which gamers apparently hate for no apparent reason whatsoever, what's one of the first things you'll really do with it? If it's got a multiplayer component, you might go online and start playing, right? Sounds reasonable. Who's paying for the servers? Yeah, that would be the publisher and the developer, of course. Now, there are some games, of course, that just use peer-to-peer, -peer, but a lot of these games do use servers, and you might think, well, on console, everything's peer-to-peer, -peer, right? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. I mean, we're talking about all sorts of different games that get shut down every year. I mean, EA's been in the headlines for repeatedly shutting down the servers for these games. There is a lot of maintenance and a lot of associated recurring cost required with keeping these services alive. Now, what pays for that? That would be the sale of the game. But what about when the game isn't actually paying for that. What about when it's used games? Because that money's not going to the publisher and the dev anymore. That money's going to the retailer. And yet the retailer's not responsible for maintaining those servers. The retailer isn't responsible for the tech support either. If you have a console game and it's used, you can still contact tech support and those people have to be paid. There are associated costs with keeping a game running. The costs don't suddenly disappear once development is finished. That That's not real. That is not a thing. You have to understand the notion that games these days are cl closer to services more so than they are to just a standalone product. There are some examples of games where this is not the case, of course, and under no circumstances do I believe that developers or publishers should be cheaping out on support or indeed cheaping out on patches, for instance. It, you know, it is their responsibility to make sure that that game works as advertised. But... For games that go on for years and years and years, and when there's more and more used sales, you're looking at associated costs for the publisher and dev that is not being equitably repaid. Yeah? The system is supposed to work in a certain way. The used game system actually bypasses that. Now, the point of online pass is to actually stop that from happening. It's not only to say, all right, you can buy used, but you have to accept that used is not necessarily as good and that if you buy a new copy, you're going to get more benefits. But it's also a case of saying, you want to play online on our servers? Okay, well, we just require you to pay in order to do that then because you didn't pay us in the first instance. Now, some people can argue, and I've heard this argument many times, and once again, I don't think it holds water, that because it was bought in the first instance, that first point of sale, it shouldn't matter. There's still, it's a zero-sum system, right? It doesn't create additional copies of the game. That one copy of the game is just circulating to different people, so it's exactly the same. No, no, it's not. If it was sold by that user, then the chances are that that user did not want to play it anymore. They weren't playing it in the first place. That means that the copy is being used way, way more than expected. 
So someone who maybe uses the server for two months and then doesn't play the game anymore versus this copy that gets sold and then the server gets used for two more months, then two more, then two more, and so on and so forth. And you wonder why consoles are moving towards either free-to-play models or towards monetization, whether it be microtransaction-based stuff or whether it be DLC. This is why, because the associated costs with running the game and actually keeping the server going is, in fact, a thing. You can't ignore that it's there. These are the reasons why comparisons to other form of media simply do not work. We can think about books as well. I know a lot of people like to argue that. One, physical wear and tear. That's actually a factor. Secondly, these companies are not responsible for the support of the product. The book doesn't cost anything once it's on the market. It's a physical item. They're not responsible for it anymore once the actual sale has happened. This is not the case with game developers. It is a completely unique situation, as far as I'm concerned. Games cost a crap ton of money to make, and they don't have anywhere near as many revenue streams and available stages of sale. You know, the lifespan of the product that goes from place to place to place that is monetized at one stage, then monetized in a different way, and then keeps going on and on and on. That does not happen with games. They are trying to do that, and they are meeting resistance at every single turn whenever they try and do something like this. So are you surprised? Here's the, the annoying thing about this whole issue, right? if we talk about the idea of trying to stop the sale of used games. The annoying thing about this is that it's actually not inherently anti-consumer, that was never the point. Unfortunately, the consumers are naturally affected by it because they like to buy used games, they like to save some money. Which is cool, nothing wrong with that. Unfortunately, these policies that we're hearing about from Microsoft and all this speculation that we've been hearing about for a number of years now, they are aimed at people like GameStop. They are not aimed at you, but you get affected by them regardless. GameStop's aggressive sale of used copies and the massive profit margins that they're making on that without at any point actually playing ball with the publisher. Not only that, but they're actually making demands. I mean, they have the audacity to make demands. And because for a long time, they were very much in a dominant position where they could. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that these guys are knob sacks, right? Think about this for a second. Because of their position of market dominance, they've been bullying devs and publishers for years into doing stuff like pre-order exclusives and so on and so forth, which are all very much anti-consumer. And yet simultaneously have the audacity to bite the hand that feeds, to basically rip off the people that their business is based on by aggressively selling used copies, and taking all of the money for themselves. Think about how dick a move that actually is, and think about what you would have to do. It's obvious that for years they've been trying to negotiate, yeah? These developers and publishers have been trying to say, well, all right, we get what you're doing, but can, you know, can we have a piece of that? Because this really hurts, and GameStop goes, lol, no, because they're in a position of dominance. They don't have to say yes under any circumstances, and yet they can still turn around and bully these people and say, right, we want this pre-order exclusive, we want this, we want that, and if you don't give it to us, then this happens. Not only that, but you're a Steam user, you want to know why Steam costs the same for the most part when it comes to new games, even though you're not actually getting a physical box and it's clearly cheaper to distribute that way? You want to know why that is? It's because people like GameStop and Game pressured publishers to make sure that the price would remain the same, because if it wasn't, they said, we'll stop stocking it then. And they've been in a position to be able to say that. Not stocking a game is actually something that can really hurt a publisher or dev, because the exposure that you get from being in a store, or just the fact that you can actually buy the bloody thing, is fairly important. That's the position that GameStop, Game, and all these other retailers have put publishers and devs in. And this is the result. And it's bad for consumers. All of this is bad for consumers. Everything is bad for consumers these days. All of these decisions, all of these things that you've seen, they do not actually come from publisher greed, as much as you would like to apply that. They come from the attempt to diversify revenue streams in the same way that the movie and the music industry have. And they've had established for decades now. And games just... They haven't caught up, yeah? They're, they're a new media, they don't really get that, and unfortunately now, they're trying to do that, and there's resistance every step of the way to it. I'm a PC gamer at the end of the day, and as a result, used games have not really affected me for a very long time. I buy my games digitally almost all the time, or I buy them new. And even then, I might as well be buying them digital because they're just codes for Steam or whatever. Used games, you know, I can't get them anymore. And if I want really old titles, I can either find them on abandonware sites or I can buy them on GOG, which is totally fine by me. 
And what I also see is the fact that as a result of us not having a used market anymore, knowing this money will go to the devs and publishers, we do actually have some very serious deep discount sales happening a lot. Yeah, There are deep discounts on titles on Steam that are relatively new that you simply don't get on consoles. One of the reasons for that is the fact that they don't have to deal with the used market anymore. They can sell games cheaply knowing they'll still get a cut of it. And this is pretty good. I mean, this is, this is good for consumers, surely. The fact that I can go onto Steam right now and I can see a whole bunch of 75% off sales. And that, that's really cool to see. I mean, that's good for me as a consumer. And I really don't believe that this kind of stuff would actually be happening where used games were dominant on the PC market. We wouldn't be seeing these gigantic deep discounts. I prefer the deep discounts on the new titles than I do the discounts on the used titles. And I especially prefer saying, you know what, all right, okay, fine. I can't afford it new. But I know that if I wait for a while, I'll be able to get it significantly cheaper. And even then, I'm still supporting the dev and the publisher. I'm still supporting them. This is good. This is a really good model. I mean, that means you get these multiple price points that people can still buy the game, still support the dev and the publisher. And then those guys can look at it and say, all right, this is where we are right now. This is how many copies we can sell at these different price points, and this is how our business is going to work. This is good. It's something you can very easily track. You can make smart business decisions based on that kind of information. Not so much around used games by any stretch of the imagination. Now, a couple more arguments that I'd like to talk about, and these are pretty much, I would say, stronger arguments because they're, they're difficult to argue one way or the other. The idea that if you are a person that purchases used games, that actually gives you more money in the long run to buy newer titles, so you buy more games. Yeah, that could actually be true. There's no doubt about that. However, the counter-argument that I put into play here is that if you buy used games on a regular basis, you generally don't go outside of that ecosystem unless you're absolutely forced to. There are, of course, plenty of examples where people will save money buying used games, and as a result, they can afford that day one purchase. Okay, I get that. That's good. However... There are plenty of other examples of people that will just buy used, and they never buy anything else, because why would they? They trade their games in, they buy more used games. That money never reaches the publisher or de developer ever, yeah? It's, it's just to the store. I mean, why you'd want to give money to GameStop, I can't imagine. It's not like they really provide a very valuable service to the gaming community. Considering the amount of bitching that we constantly hear about it, I'm very surprised that people are suddenly turning around and actually defending them. I mean, what? <laughs> really? It's, yeah, I think that people like to just break that argument out when in reality they just, they want cheaper games. And I get it. I want cheaper games. That's why I use Steam. I get cheap games there all the time. Pretty easy. And yet used isn't actually part of the factor there. But you're right. That It is definitely part of the buying and selling process, there are some people that do benefit from that. Definitely, yeah. Difficult to argue with. Another example you can use, which I definitely don't disagree with, although uh, ironically enough, a lot of gamers are resistant to it, is the idea that when you buy a game, it's a platform, and that it's a platform to sell you stuff afterwards. Yeah, It's a service. So even buying a used title, you can still buy DLC. And as a result, you can make your money back that way. And in fact, DLC is a really good way of making money for the dev and the publisher. Generally speaking, the profit margins on that are much, much higher. And as a result, if you're going to push that kind of business model, then you shouldn't actually be afraid of used games. In fact, you should be embracing them. And the reason you should embrace them is because you can actually sell the same DLC to the same copy of the game multiple times. I know, what a crazy idea, but you can do it. If someone buys some DLC, plays the game, and then trades their game in, the DLC stays on their account. And then whoever buys it has to pick up the DLC again. What, how wonderful. What a great system that is for you. If you're wanting to push in that direction, then you should be embracing used games. How, what a brilliant idea that is. And that's really odd, isn't it? Because we're seeing a lot of that, and yet then we're seeing Microsoft turn around and say, no, 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 we want this, we want this. We want to discourage used game sales. But if you want a DLC-heavy market, then surely you wouldn't want to do that. Very strange. Very strange. Not really sure what's going on there at all. Trying to figure it out. I don't really get it. Here is the reality of the situation. Eventually, you will not be able to buy used games anymore. Not for current generation systems. It won't happen this generation. It'll probably happen in the next one. There are already platforms where you can't buy used titles. Great example being iOS. You can't buy used games on iPad. You can barely buy used games on PC anymore. And eventually you will not be able to buy current generation 
used movies or music. You won't be able to do that anymore. Because everything's moving towards digital. Even books are moving towards digital. Less and less physical book sales, more and more ebook sales. That's where we're going. This is the reality of the situation. As a result, though, I do have to agree with the people that are at least smart enough to say, but if we're moving in that direction, why exactly are people like Microsoft trying to push before that happens and say, we gotta take a cut? Yeah, you're right, actually. Why are they trying to do that? If they know that digital sales are the thing, and they're going to be the thing in the future, and eventually people will only buy their games digitally, they will not buy them on optical media anymore. If they know this is the case, why push it now? Why get that negative PR now? It does seem like a cash grab before it's time. It really does. But here's the thing, right? I'm not going to pretend that I support used games because I've seen way too many developers and publishers just go under. And I've also worked for the company that exploits this, yeah? I worked for game and I see the profit margins. They're huge, massive profit margins. It doesn't necessarily matter, I suppose, in the eyes of many people that these stores are making huge bank off the back of this stuff because at the end of the day, they, they get the benefit from it too, right? So who cares who makes bank in the meantime? But hey, I've been a PC gamer for X number of years. I very much got used to this ecosystem that we have. A lot of you have as well. And as a direct result, you understand that, well, while we can't buy used games, we can still get things cheaply. There's a fallacy that shutting down used games means that you will end up in a situation where games are more expensive. And that's bollocks. I mean, not only adjusting for inflation, but just the fact that there are so many sales on the Steam platform clearly indicates that this is not true. Games are not actually going up in price at all. Relative to inflation, these games should be 100 bucks plus now. And they're not. They remain at the same kind of price. And there are even more examples of games that come out at lower price points. If I go on Steam right now and I look at the new games, I see about half, in fact, no, more than half of this list is new, brand new, just came out a couple of days ago, yet doesn't cost full price. Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe is $6, Rush Brothers, $9, Dust Elysian Tale, $13.49, Element 4i, $10, Skyward Collapse, $4.49. The only full price game on this list isn't even a game. It's a piece of software, Music Creator 6 Touch. There is not a single full priced game 50 or $60 on this list. There is no evidence to suggest that the removal of used games would actually increase the cost. That's bollocks. Absolute bollocks. So, yeah, that's going to be my opinion. It's been my opinion for a long time. I'm not going to change it unless I see some very compelling evidence. And at the end of the day, I'm also not going to pander, right? If you want honesty, and I assume you do because you come here, then you're going to have to let me hold these opinions. I'm sorry. You don't get to call me anti-consumer just because I believe that, quite frankly, there are better ways of doing things than GameStop making 90 to 95% profit margins or even more than that on used copies of games. I do believe that developers and publishers should be rewarded for their work. And I also believe that even if you take that model, you can still have great deals for the consumer. And it's a happy medium. It's the best of both worlds. Maybe killing off used games gets us there. Think about that. All right, folks. 